let's see how we can run inference with also Lytics and the RT DTR model and also benchmarking so we can benchmark the performance on both different videos but also different types of hardware and export formats so with also Lytics we actually have an export functionality and mode as well where we can benchmark a model can be a model out of the box can also be your own custom trained model we have videos covering the full training pipeline and everything so once your model is done training you can benchmark it to see where you're getting the best performance on different export formats and also just see how it's performing on your data set so you can run this with a single command it's going to take care of all the installs and all the exports and everything so this video here we're going to take a look at the rt dtr it's also supported with ultralytics if we go inside the documentation we have our models tab all the models on the left side are the available models directly out of the box with also Lytics, which you can both go in and train run inference you can export them run them with the optimized frameworks and all of that so all these ones here to the left are supported so we have a video already covering the real-time the chain transformer if you want to know more about the theory what's going on in the transformers for computer vision because all the yarn models they're convolutional neural networks so that are based on convolutions where the real-time detection transformer is based on a transform architecture where if you're for example familiar with the vit the vision transformer it's working in the exact same way as the large language models pretty much where they're working with text here we're working with images but then we actually just take our image divide it into small patches and each patch will then just be for example a word in a sentence then we can take patches throw them in as a sentence and then we have our transforming model localizing using the attention mechanism to figure out where are the objects but also classifying it into the different classes that we want to detect so yeah you can go in and read more about and also just Check out documentation and our YouTube video covering it in full details. Now we're going to see how we can run inference with it, but also how we can do benchmarking on different formats. So here is how you can run the inference. Let's open up a Google Colab notebook. So we're just going to open that Colab notebook. We're going to create a new notebook from scratch. You can use the free GPU resources available inside Google Colab. And it can then export to different formats as well. So we're going to choose the runtime. We're going to use the free T4 DPU on Colab. Now we can go back into the documentation. I'm just going to grab this one here. You can see the two models. So we have a large and extra large model. It can be used for update detection. With also legacy both support inference, validation, training, and export. So if we go back again, the first thing that we have to do is just pip install Autolytics. And it will take care of everything, all the connects, all the inst installation of the dependencies. Let me just close previous ones here. We terminate them so we can run this one here. After that, we can create a new block of code. I'm just going to paste this. Let's take it in two steps. So this is how we can run training. And this is how we load the model. We can get the information. So this is just the architecture information about the model if you want that. So let's delete these two parts. There we go. We're going to grab the inference part. We can create a new block of code. And what we're going to do is grab some new videos. So I'm just going to throw in some videos to our Colab notebook. You can also run this local. So now while the videos are uploading, it will just take a few seconds. It has installed everything with Autolytics. So we can create an instance of our model. So it's going to download it automatically. If you train your own custom model, you can just swap out the path here and it's going to run with your own model. This is just a pre-trained one on the Coco data set. So to download the model, we can see it's available over here to the left. For the source here, we can actually go in and specify just the path to our video and if you run this local you can also display the results so right now i'm just going to you can set show equal to true we can't do that in a google code notebook but i'm just going to set save equal to true so it will save a video file of the output results to our folder here on the left side so this is all we have to do this is the source the video we use our model let's now go in and run inference and we can see the results after So now it's going to process every single frame. You can also run tracking directly with it. All of these things here are supported. We can see the inference time, so 60 milliseconds, 50 milliseconds for a single image. We detect a lot of persons, some cars, and also some trucks here in our frames. We have 174 frames, so it will just take a few seconds, and we have processed the whole video. There we go. Now we have it inside our runs directory. Detect, predict, 
we have our cars.avi. So let's now just download this one. While it's downloading, let's go in and see this is actually like how we run our inference. We can just swap out the video. So let's do it for our birds as well. There we go. I'm swapping out this one. Run inference. You can do this local on your own computer as well. While it's running, we can take a look at the other video. So our cars.avi. We're detecting a person even sitting in here in the car. And we have two people in the car in the back here. You can probably play around with the, some confidence scores as well. This is just out of the box. You can set the conf equal to the score that you want inside the prediction as well. But even these cars here driving around, the cars are pretty much spot on. This is pretty cool. This is how you can use the RTDTR model. You can also use the YOLO models in the exact same way. So now we have 442 frames that we're processing. And after we're done doing that, let's go back into the documentation. So this is how you can run the inference. If we want to go in and benchmark it, we have the modes tab or a task. We have the different modes. You can go inside benchmark. So we support train, validation, predict, export, track, and benchmark. If you scroll a bit further down, we have the example on how we can use it. So let's go in here. There we go. We can benchmark it. We can. We also need to specify a data set. When we do that, now we're just going to use the Coco8 YAML, but you can specify if you have your own custom data, data set, your own custom model, make sure you use your custom data set to do the benchmarking as well. But this is just a base model, so it's just a Coco class set, so it's okay here to run the Coco8 data set. But you just need to specify the YAML file. We have videos covering how you can construct your own custom data set, do the data annotations, how to work with the YAML files, and all of those things. So yeah, we have our predict, we have our classes AVI. Let's download that one. Here, instead of the model, our YOLO model. Let's go up. We grab our RTDTR large model. You can also run with the extra large. There we go. We have the image size 640. We don't want to use half precision. We want to use the device zero. So this is benchmarking on GPU. Half precision is but just if you want to use floating point 16. Let's maybe even just set that to true, just so we get even better performance. Let's see our birds classes. So here we're just detecting birds with our base model directly out of the box. And we pretty much get all the birds detected with very high confidence score. This is with no training. This is just a model directly out of the box. So this is a pretty cool use case. Let's see how we can run the benchmarking. This is everything that you have to do with Autolytics. It's a few commands that you need to run. Everything is in the data set that you put into it when you want to fine tune it and also apply the business use cases, extract the detections, apply the business logic on top of it and get the models out there. But once you have your predictions, once you have your custom model, we need to go in and benchmark it on our data set and also export it into a correct format for optimizations when you're running inference, depending on the hardware and all of that. Let's check, check here. So right now it's doing some check for requirements. If they're not there, it's going to attempt to auto update it. And then once it's done, it's going to run through the one next. It will just take a few minutes to execute all this. So all the different optimization frameworks, all the different export formats, which are supported in your current environment, it's going to export it to it, run the evaluation on it, and then it's going to report you with the results and a full table. So we see here, it's still running on GPU. You have Tensor T, if you have that available, it's going to use that. Open window is going to fail here, depending on if you have like Intel hardware. Right now we are running with our NVIDIA TPU. But if you just want to benchmark it on CPU and you have Intel hardware, it's also going to do it with Open Vino. So let's just wait a bit. We are going to get the results and we can take a look at the output. You can specify not half precision in the aid. You can benchmark any model and all the parameters, all the arguments to this function, you can specify them as well. You can find them inside the documentation. So if you go in here, we have our data, image size, half precision, in date, device, the different formats that we want to export into, and our model. This is how easy it is to use. Make sure you use the benchmarking after you have trained a model before you put it into production. So now our benchmarking is done. It took around 30 minutes because here in Google Colab, we have, it has to install all the different optimization frameworks that it's going to export into and also run the test for. So it will detect everything that you have in the environment. So if you want to use one of these formats, make sure that it's actually like installed or have the correct dependencies. If it has like some CUDA stuff that it needs to have, 
TensorRT or whatever, make sure that is act like installed to start with. Also, Linux will try to install as much as possible. If it's just like versioning, packaging, and all of that, make sure you have your environment. It's going to run the benchmark at exactly that environment. Try to do it for all these formats. And now we can see it has been successfully doing it for PyTorch, TorScript, Onyx, OpenVINO, and MMN. This is only for our Coco 8 datasets, and we only have like eight images. That's also why the inference time here is going to be um, <laughs> very slow because we actually need to pass it through multiple images when it runs the benchmark and it runs multiple images, does warm up and all these things here. So the model is running like for maybe a hundred or it's not thousands of images. You take the average of it and then you get better inference time. So you can even see the PyTorch model here is slower, but just looking at the open window, for example, or the ONNX, it's still faster than just the PyTorch. Torch script is not faster. All these export formats are supported with Ultralytx. We also get a table down here with the model size, the mean error position of the data set that we're running it on, the inference time, frames per second, this is all you need. So in the full computer vision pipeline, you have your data set, you train your custom model, you run some evaluation on it, you can retrain it again. Once you have your final model and you want to export into a desired optimization framework, for your specific production environment, make sure to run the benchmark in here, let it just run, install everything, and then you can see what format you should go with for your production system. What is getting you the best mean error position probably won't change that much depending on the format, but what is squeezing out the most frames per second. This is very useful when you're building real world computer vision systems, and this can be used for all the Ultralytics models available in the models tab that I showed you in the start. Hope you learned a ton of this video here. This is very important to know and also just learn how to work with because this is how we get real computer vision systems out there. Hope you learned a ton. Hope to see you guys in one of the upcoming videos. Until then, happy learning.